Hey guys, what's up? Hope you're well. Uh, this one we're going to talk about uh, VS Code extensions. So if you watched the last video, uh, that is great. Uh, we're going to pick up from where we left off. We're going to take a look at extensions. So I use the keyboard shortcut uh, Command Shift X to open up the extensions. And I'm going to show you the ones that I have installed. Um, I've already installed some because I've been using this editor and I'm just going to share with you some of the ones that I like and that I recommend. Um, some of them you don't have to have but there's a whole marketplace and an ecosystem behind this and you guys can go out there and grab what you want depending on what you're doing. So I'll quickly go over the filter area real quickly. So over here we have features, uh, most popular, recent, uh, and any kind of recommendations. You have them by category, built in, installed. If I click installed, you can see what I have currently installed. If I click enabled, you can also see the same thing, what I have enabled. If I clicked by category and say I'm looking for I don't know, things by testing, it'll show you all the ones that are available for testing. This is another good one actually that I don't have installed, but if you're with JavaScript, I recommend you check that one out. This is really nice because you have a way to kind of look and see what you're looking for as far as extensions and then go and find them. So if you're looking for formatters or you're looking for snippets or you're looking for uh, things around data science or whatever, you can just go grab those. You can also check what's installed, what's enabled, and you can do a refresh over here so you can kind of refresh that then we can kind of go over here under this like i guess horizontal kebab menu or drop down and you can set your extensions to be auto updated or you can enable them or you can enable all extensions disable them if there's something going on and you want to just shut them all down this is the one to do so um, this one here there's a file extension called .vsix or v6 or whatever you want to call that we want to manually install an extension and there's a gallery of extensions out there if you want to go look them up give that a quick google and you would install those ones manually uh, that way if you wanted to you can start um, by checking for updates so i'll just quickly run through uh, looks like everything i have in, is up to date um, you can search manually here in the marketplace so if you're looking for something like you know for instance we're looking for this one here and you can just quickly search if you click on it it'll give you a little bit of a description and a rundown of what it's about how many people have installed it you know how popular it may be what framework and what it's for and if you click install it will install that so it'll take a moment it'll install and when it's done it'll leave you with some options on how to configure this and how to set that up so do read that follow any kind of tutorials or anything that they have or ways to make this useful for you or any keyboard shortcuts that i recommend for sure so the ones that i have going on right now so i'll go back to my filter and i'm going to go to the ones that i have installed i work on various different things so i have different ones installed you may not need these plugins but this one's ideal for if you're using alpine js or any kind of um, framework thing dealing with alpine this one i like because it does auto close tags so if you write a tag, if you're working with HTML or, you know, any kind of thing, XML or whatever, and you, you write a tag, it'll automatically close it for you. And this one also helps with the counterpoint to it. It's just the renaming of tags. So if you rename a tag and you highlight it, it does that. I think some functionalities are built into other editors and things just that it does this out of the gate. But at one point, I think VS Code, uh, you had to like find alternatives for this stuff. Uh, better comments I like it's pretty cool so if you're making comments and you're making documentation around your stuff this is pretty cool it highlights and kind of color codes this um, it's really nice another one it's called bracket pair colorizer I do like this actually and I'll show you how this works so if you want to install that it's a fairly popular plugin as well or extension I'm going to open up my explorer and I'm just going to jump to let's see open up a file and I'm just going to say web.php and down here, you can see how these brackets are colorized. So I'll have this purple one corresponding to it. It draws this line across of it. I made a random D there. So there you go. And then over here, it has the corresponding brackets as well. So really nice if you want to just have a visual kind of representation of, you know, where these things are. Because, you know, working with code, uh, sometimes just staring at the screen, it's all the same. And it's like you know, same color, the same gray or whatever, you, things may get missed and your eyes may get tired. So that one is a welcome addition to my extensions. So let's go over here and check that again. Spell checker. I recommend this. Uh, a lot of people don't, uh, certain things, um, your IDE or editor might complain because it doesn't understand the word. So you'll have to add that word to your vocabulary for your specific profile.
I do like this one. The .env one, I like this one as well because sometimes when you're working with Laravel projects or any kind of PHP project or something that has a .env file in it, it becomes kind of hard to read and it's just, well, not that pleasant. So I'll open up my Explorer again. I'll jump to my .env file. And you can see it just kind of color codes this stuff and highlights values for you. Makes it a little bit easier. And I think at one point, if you have duplication, like multiple things in here that are the same, it'll also flag and give you a warning. Does it say you have the same thing twice? Uh, I know that works in uh, PHP Storm, but I, I believe it's also the same in BS Code. Let's jump back. I work with spreadsheets from time to time. So this one I like, uh, you don't have to have it. It's just, you know, makes it nice and uh, easy to work with you know, CSVs or .CSVs inside of this. Git Lens, that's a whole beast on itself. Excellent plugin. When we get into Git and things like that, you'll welcome this one as well. I recommend getting it. If you're working with HTML and those kind of things, you need some support here. This one I like too, ES6 code snippets, wonderful. Laravel snippets, this extra IntelliSense, it does have its pros and cons, but sometimes it kind of gets in the way and it conflicts with this one. When you come from a different um, type of editor and you have different preferences, you tend to notice the little nuances that you wouldn't notice before. So over here, we also have um, just my theme. So I like this theme. You can pick whatever you want. Um, all it does for me is sometimes it allows me to do the ligatures and certain things like that. So I get certain things in a certain color. You can choose all sorts of themes. If you just type in themes, I believe, I think there's a whole smorgasbord of themes here. You're going to have a ton of themes to choose from. So that's always nice. And you can always pick out what you want and customize your editor the way you want it to be. Um, down here, uh, I use Livewire from time to time. This is pretty good. Um, so it's not a bad uh, plugin and snippet. Markdown, I definitely use this as well. This is the enhanced version. So if I'm working with the project and let's say I open up something like a readme and I want to see the readme side by side, Visual Studios, you can click on this. And this is what I think the default is. It's not bad. Looks great. And if we were to close this, I think the alternative is, is this enhanced version. It does a few more things, um, but they're one and the same. So you don't need this, but um, for some reason, I seem to like it and I kind of went with it. Over here, material icon theme. This is great too. Uh, very popular. Obviously, I recommend this one as well. Um, this one comes highly recommended. So if you're working on a project and I'm in the Explorer, see all these things here that we have. Uh, it, it nicely like shows the files that you know belong to the right associations and the right icons that go with them. So if you're working with Laravel or Git or an EMV file or JSON, it kind of shows the corresponding uh, logo or icon that goes with that. There's another one, I think it's called VS Code Icons, kind of does the same thing. It's nice to have that visual representation. You look at it, you see the file, you recognize the extension or the thing, and then you just you know go with it. Over here, Path IntelliSense, I do recommend this one as well. Um, if you're working with PHP, you'll need these ones. This one, I think I was like one point I was trying to like just get really nice like snippets for like blog articles and things like that. And it does a few more things as well, but you can check the features and uh, the details behind it. But I like this one as well. Uh, this one's a must. Um, it's a kind of opinionated. There's ES Lint and it's prettier. Let me know what your thoughts are because there's a whole thing around this. This one I just installed. You just saw that. If you're working with SAS, the same thing. When we get into Tailwind, this will become your best friend. So the type hinting is, is priceless. Over here, Viewter, if you're working with Vue, uh, you'll enjoy this. There's a whole bunch of other ones. Uh, these are the ones that I reach to from time to time. Um, you don't have to have what I have. You don't have to copy it verbatim. That's it for extensions. I can go into theming on the next one, but realistically, guys, if you take a look at the theme and you just kind of apply it within your extensions and you go to, like, say, settings and you type in theme, you can see here that you can apply whatever themes you want. So I won't go into theming. That is it for extensions. I hope you found this video useful. I hope you found out where to get extensions. I hope you also know what extensions you can apply and how to configure them. And I will see you guys in the next one.